This is the planting of the little oak trees that I grew from the acorns in the earlier video. It's rained the last two days, so I'm on a fairly precarious road. This is our road heading down to the hollow. I'm not sure if you could see that, but this is the ravine right there. And there is my bucket full of oaks. One of three buckets full of oaks that I want to get planted. I have no idea if these things are going to grow or not. They have a fairly, red oak has a fairly good um, shade tolerance, but I don't know if I'll be able to find any holes in the canopy. I mean, the only holes I can see, you can see some light right through there and right down there. But I believe those are the ravine. See, we're getting towards the bottom of the ravine now. There's a clearing down there. But we're putting up a deer stand there, a permanent deer stand for older hunters or disabled hunters that has a, a regular stairway and some of the conveniences in it. See, there's an opening over there, but I'll be damned if I want to go the way the hell over there to get to it. There's an opening over there as well. Let's see what I can find straight ahead. Altogether, if you've checked out any of the earlier videos, I'm sure I've said this before, but from the back of the house to the bottom here is 210 feet down. From the ridge to this little hollow here. Oh, look at the big mushroom there. Yeah, there's going to be big mushrooms all over the place because of the rain. Or not necessarily big, but there's mushrooms all over that log as well. I'll bet I find some chicken of the woods. But that I'll... I'll be walking right through the woods with some of these so with some of the other buckets so that's the clearing that we could see from above and we're not planting there okay so this I got two trees down I gotta get down here with the chainsaw I can get to this point with the gator right here when it's not so wet but my old dry crossing was washed out uh, coming on two years ago by a huge rainfall that did massive damage all around here it cut the bottom of the ravine down two feet you can still kind of see where, where the green is. That's where the bottom of the ravine used to be. And you used to be able to drive right across this. Now it's too steep on the far end. I have a neighbor that comes through and crosses anyways. Goes over that way and under the branch and whatever. But that's with a, that's with a smaller machine. So we got to have a dozer come through and and cut this again. I'd like to make a bridge, but we'll see how the funds go. We got some new jobs possibly coming up that might help us pay for it. So there's a camera right there. I'm on that camera.
deer cam. And there's uh, deer stand. This is the one we'll be replacing. We'll take out that that tree right right there with the Y in it. So I'm not really seeing any place to put these in here. But I'll find a place. Okay, number one is planted. And if I zoom back, you can see I still got uh, I got five more in this bucket. And like I said, I got more buckets to go. What I'm doing here is just this this area is heavily oak. Um, so I'm just going back and forth across the sides of the road where there's little maple groves and planting them at the base of that. Eventually these will grow up right past the maple and shade them out. Or I'll come and thin the maple like this. No, that's not a maple. That's an elm. Five more to go and I have about a quarter mile uphill, well, I gotta go down to that opening right there. That's the opening that uh, I showed you a little bit earlier. And then um, up to the gator, 110 feet up and about a quarter of a mile forward. And grab another bucket and then do it again. Two more times. This will be fun. I'm still over here on the east ridge of our land. I don't get over here as much as I should, especially since the road's out down at the ravine down there. It's really beautiful over here. Um, a lot better trees than on the other side. I mean, I got a cherry right next to me. This is all oak, maple, cherry, hickory. We got a good deal of uh, of shag bark hickory on this side. There, I, as far as I know, there is no um, savanna trees on this side. But I, I really haven't searched through the whole thing yet. I'll get further in when I get the next batch of little oaks to plant. Yeah, this is kind of hard to do one-handed, but lots of roots and stuff in there. See, I came, I came without a mount for the other base that I have. You can see the taproot is circling around. Now it can go down into the ground. The soil is nice and moist from the rain we just had. And then the rain tonight will assure that these get watered in pretty well. Okay, all done. And like I said before, they grow pretty well in the shade. I just ran across a few of them that were maybe six foot tall growing in completely dense shade kind of like this in front of me. So they'll do fine. In other videos, you saw me spraying suckers from the old stumps. And this is one that's about 35 years old. That's about when this was heavily logged. And you can see the end result of the suckering. They took out this one tree right here. 
rotten boy and all of these others suckered out of it and these are all I would guess if you cut that down that's going to be about 35 40 years old when they came through here so let that be a lesson that's why you get rid of the damn suckers as well What I'm looking for, on, at least on this ridge, is openings where there used to be a thicket of these green ash. There's a dead one right there, top of it's right along here. And there's some tops right here and some birch. You can see the broken tree there, a dead one there. Yeah, that, that. So, oh, yeah, and there's a dead one there. It allows a bit more sun, or, yeah, it allows a bit more sun into the forest floor. These red oaks will do good either way. They'll just keep growing. You know, it's not what I want for a savanna, but um, if I'm going to replace, if these uh, green ash are going to be replaced by anything I would rather it not be maple and that it be oak instead so I have another clearing right there and another one right there and then I'm going to head up that way which is towards one of our culvert pipes got a nice opening right there it's just about noon so the sun's straight overhead I can see where you know there's openings in the canopy so I got what's left in this bucket, one, two, three, four, four, and what's in the bag. So I should be done soon. Okay, um, I popped out right about where that cage is down there. I don't know if you can see it or not. Here's another cage with a chestnut. I am all out of oaks. I do believe most of them will grow just fine, but they'll end up lumber at some point. This will end up being savanna right here, and probably that whole area where I planted them as well. But if so, that'll be up to my daughter to do. I'll concentrate on this and try to figure out how to get... Uh, Horses in Savannah in the same place. They've already tried it with, uh, oh, what is that, uh, Highland Cattle. So I'll have to go read the paper on that and see how well that worked. Maybe it's a combination of horses and Highland Cattle that will keep it clear enough so that the, uh, oaks can stay short like that and spreading and the pasture land stays pasture land and not suckers and uh, brambles like it is here okay I do believe I got bit up a little bit I didn't think there was any or many bugs down there I didn't even bring the spray but I'm feeling pretty itchy. All right, that'll do it for the planting of the little oaks. Uh, you can see the original video way back when, when I was collecting acorns and sprouting them. I'm doing all kinds of crazy ass videos here, so hit the subscribe button and then click that little bell for notifications and you'll be notified whenever we upload a new video. Thanks for stopping by and have a great day.